I know, I know, I know, I know. I haven't uploaded last week's WTF, and I have yet to put out that Marvel video where I talk about why I haven't been reading Marvel comics lately. Again, it's due to laziness. I'm trying to get better, guys. You just gotta give it some time. I mean, hey, at least I'm uploading twice a month. Wow, that's so sad. For those that are new to this series, this is essentially a series where I'll be looking at the WTF moments from comics that were released from DC Comics. In this video's case, the week of July 5th, 2017. Please keep in mind that these moments are not what I find strictly negative. It could be positive and or surprising. They're just moments that make me go WTF. Also, possible spoilers for the recent Rebirth Comics release this week, and I'll post the list of comics that I'll be talking about in this video in the description just in case if you wanted to know what comics I'll be talking about for this video. We start things off with Batman number 26 and that moment where the Riddler, after he gets shot by the Joker and escapes in the previous issue, he's kidnapped the Doctor and forced him to fix the wound. After the Doctor finishes, Riddler still has a big red mark on his chest, so he decides for some reason to get a scalpel and cut the top portion of his chest to a question mark. Why does he do this? I have no fucking idea other than because he's just the Riddler and he has an obsession with question marks. Regardless of his reasoning, still a WTF moment. Right, so here we see the Riddler talking to Poison Ivy in some random park, and the scene goes down like this. Riddler talks to Poison Ivy about someone promising something about Scorch Earth. While this conversation is happening, a couple of guys shows up in the background to kill the Riddler. One of them tells Ivy to move out the way, but for some reason she doesn't. Then the guy said, fuck it, let's kill her too, so she incapacitates them. While this is happening, Riddler then asks a riddle. Why? Why would he do this? Well, because he gets off on that, I guess. I don't fucking know. What is the riddle? Well, it goes down like this. If April showers bring May flowers, well then what do May flowers bring? Poison Ivy doesn't understand the question, neither do I. And the Riddler just answers it saying May flowers brings pilgrims. Uh, Poison Ivy understands and the scene just ends. You're probably asking yourself, why would I describe this entire scene? Well, that's because this entire scene is a WTF moment in terms of that I have no idea what this scene is or what's it trying to be. Was the Riddler trying to convince Ivy to work for him? What's the point in that riddle? Why didn't Ivy move out the way if these guys just wanted the Riddler? So many questions and no, don't give me that bullshit that these are questions that are going to be answered in the next issues or... I don't know, in the ongoing storyline. Yes, I understand that this is an ongoing comic, but these are questions that can be easily answered in just a few speech bubbles. Okay, so in the previous issue of Cyborg, Anomaly, who is the villain of the comic, created a machine because a voice in his head told him to. I don't know, but the plan for this machine was to eliminate all humans without the need to destroy anything. Anomaly activates the machine and it creates a portal that sucks in Anomaly himself, Cyborg, Variant, Sarah, this guy, and Black Narcissist. God damn, I can't get used to that name. So the WTF moment here is that it turns out in this issue that the machine Anomaly was trying to make, it just creates a portal to an alternate reality. Finally! Finally, after so long, Beast Boy meets Cyborg for the very first fucking time. This is a massive WTF due to the fact that they have never actually met during the New 52. I think I speak for most fans of Teen Titans when I say it's about fucking time. Cyborg's mother, who not only is alive in this alternate reality, but is the voice that was communicating with Anomaly and told them to create the machine. The Metal Men make their Rebirth debut, which I haven't seen them in ooh, a long time ago. I think they were only shown in just two issues of a Justice League comic, and then I haven't seen them at all, so this is a big surprise to me. Power Girl explains to Kid Flash on how she got her powers, and the comic even gives you a reference on what comic series and issue this event happened. Problem is, the comic issue that they're referencing is incorrect. Power Girl said in this caption, she left me her name and powers when she returned to her own Earth. This did not happen in World's Finest issue number one. This happened in number 25 and number 26. 25 being the issue where the original Power Girl returns to Earth 2, that's where she was from, and issue 26 where the new Power Girl gets her powers. Man, people said reading every issue of the new 52 that they've put out was a complete waste of time. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it really was. Tara makes her Rebirth debut. It's about damn time. I've been wondering what happened to her since the end of the Ravagers. 
We got a grammar error in the pages of Green Lantern. When Remy mentions that he creates weapons to focus green energy, instead, he says create a weapons to focus green energy. And if you think that's nitpicky, yeah, you're right, it is. Then again, this comic has three editors. Let that sink in. So we're all in agreement that the appearance of Jessica Cruz consists of the average Green Lantern suit, but what makes her stand out is the Green Lantern logo that's placed on her right eye. See, it's drawn around her eye, so why is it on the bottom of her right eye? This may be shocking, but not so much to an avid reader of Aquaman, but Mira manages to take down the Justice League, which I consider pretty impressive, but at the same time not really because she is pretty badass. Here you see Batman trying to sneak behind Mira and tranquilize her. Seems that this is going to be easy since Mira doesn't know that Batman is behind her and Batman has a reputation for being the master of stealth. So somebody explain to me, why would Batman jump up behind Mira to tranquilize her? And as you can see, it failed as Mira grabbed them by the neck. <laughs> their faces, oh, their faces, it, look, it looks so weird. I don't know, I just, I just don't like it. There are no WTF moments in Green Arrow and Nightwing for the second week in the row. Now, I could have put the ending of the latest Nightwing where it seems that DC has finally pulled the trigger and killed off Nightwing as a WTF moment, but this is a comic book. In comic books, they're notorious for giving us moments where it seems like the character is dead, but they're really not. So I personally didn't feel like it was worth putting it as a WTF moment. So that's all the moments that made me go WTF from DC Comics this week. By the time I'm done with this video, I'm gonna be off watching the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, and hopefully I can put out a review by tomorrow. If not, you have every right to dislike every single thing that I do. Not, not joking. I think that I need to get over this laziness in some way, and if disliking the shit out of my videos is what it takes, then by all means, please do. Because this, this is, this is annoying me, actually. But anyway, if there are any moments that you would like to share or any that I've missed, let me know down in the comment section as well. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Have a good one.